Welcome back to Calibrated's Daily Updates. This is the update for September the 20th, 2024. I hope all of you are having a fantastic day. Uh, this is just a reminder that if you're new here, uh, it would be a great help if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribed. Um, if you're a regular here, you should already be doing that. And if you're not, shame on you. It is the easiest way for you to be a community member. Just kidding. I really appreciate all of your support. Um, and if you are new to this series, basically what this series is, is just a smaller, more digestible update uh, for the people that don't have necessarily the time to watch an hour and a half live stream, or if you just want a little bit more content and daily updates, uh, this is for you. All right, without uh, further ado, uh, let's get into it. But just before I do that, if you guys go to the link in the description of this video, you will find my Patreon, my Telegram, and my Twitter. All of those places you can uh, follow, subscribe, or join for free uh, and get access to more of my content. Thank you so much for all the people who support me financially on Patreon. Um, I really appreciate you guys more than anything else. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it over to the map and starting off with the Kursk region here, uh, we will look at this map and we will see uh, that the Russians have advanced. So if you remember, this was the previous uh, advance. I added this line so you can see where the new Russian advance was. Uh, the Russians have advanced along the border here and pushed up to the town of Servidilivkov, uh, uh, sorry, Servidilivkov. Govo. Um, sorry about the pronunciation. I am not good at that, but uh, it is an important advance. It brings the Russians along this highway, uh, in fact, cutting the highway, which will uh, you know, cut off the Ukrainians up in this northern section of the Kursk incursion zone. Um, it also brings the Russians closer, ever closer to the R200 highway here, um, which they might just go straight through the Sumi region, capturing this and uh, breaking the road along this area right here, which would completely cut off logistics to Struzda uh, for the Ukrainians in the Kursk region. Uh, again, another update. Uh, this was uh, yesterday, this was today. So the Russians are moving rather quickly up in the Kursk region. All right, moving over to the Kharkov region and into Tekin. Uh, you can see that the Russians have advanced on to this little hill right here. Not a major advance, uh, but this area seems sees almost no uh, pr forward progress for the Russians because they're not uh, really trying to advance in this region, or they haven't been for the, since basically the line froze. Um, and now we're starting to see a little bit of Russian movement, so just something I thought was worth noting. <clears throat> All right, moving down here to Makivka, uh, the Russians have crossed the river here um, and have established themselves across on this side of the Zhivyets River. Um, a pretty major uh, advanced just because this river is supposed to be a good uh, defensive line for the Ukrainians. So the fact that the Russians are able to cross here and have established themselves across um, will have major impacts on the rest of this uh, Zhibiets River region. All right, moving down to the Kleschevka Bakhmut front, uh, the Ukrainians have retreated from their last pocket that they were holding here uh, near Andrivka, uh, which means that all of the 2023 Ukrainian counteroffensive efforts on the Bakhmut front have now been completely undone. And as we've talked about previously, the Russians have already crossed here towards Stepochke. So uh, the situation is becoming worse by the day here for the Ukrainians. Uh, this area is a very, very important high ground. In fact, this entire canal all the way running up to uh, Slavyansk is uh, on the high ground. So all of it is important. Moving down to the Ukrainsk Seladove front, the Russians have made a small advance in through these fields, just leveling the front here from uh, southern Seladove to northern Ukrainsk. Not a huge update, uh, but uh, it just uh, sort of filling in the gaps. Uh, and then finally, uh, the most significant update of the day, in my personal opinion, uh, is the advancement of the Russians out of uh, Hostre uh, to, in the direction of the penal colony here, a prison, uh, where they have reportedly captured half of it, but have likely captured the entire thing. Uh, it is going to make holding Maximilian Yanka uh, very, very, very difficult. It is also going to make holding or or Ostrivsky uh, nearly impossible because uh, this bridge right here is out. And this uh, sort of swampy reservoir 
uh, Vavocha River runoff area uh, really cuts it off from logistics. So uh, we can expect the Russians to expand out this way, uh, bringing the battle to the fortification right here outside of Kohove um, and uh, moving up here, capturing uh, Oleksandropol uh, as well, because as you can see, again, the Vavocha River runs right up here and makes holding this area incredibly difficult for the Ukrainians. So we can expect uh, the Russians to sort of push out in a Y shape right here, capturing all of this and putting immense pressure pressure on this uh, Harenki pocket right here. All right, that is it for the updates today. I wanted to thank all of you so much uh, for watching uh, and tune in tomorrow. Uh, I won't do these if there are absolutely no updates, but if there are any updates, I will uh, make sure to come on here and do a daily update video for you. Uh, please give it a like, give it a subscribe, comment if you are so inclined. It all helps me and it is all free and only takes two seconds for you guys. So I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.